Well, in an episode of Jay Leno's Garage, you know, we like anything here that rolls, explodes, and makes noise, and this does all of those, well, except explodes. Uh, this is a vehicle built by the Army for the Army. Uh, it's called the Fed. That's about all I know about it. I'm going to learn now, just like you do, because it just showed up here, and we got a bunch of Army guys, and we have the General himself, General Vi. Come on in here. How are you, sir? Good. Jay, how are Pleasure you? Pleasure to have you. Real honor. Glad Thank you so much. Likewise, likewise. This is your baby? It is. Uh, I command the Army Material Command, which is headquartered in Huntsville, Alabama. And we have about 75,000 soldiers and civilians uh, stationed throughout the United States and about 144 countries overseas. And this is an effort that was sponsored by the Office of the Secretary of Defense in partnership with uh, the Army and with the TARDAC, which is a tank and automotive research development engineering center located in Warren, Michigan. Okay. And working with industry, uh, developed the uh, the Fed, the now, Fuel Efficient Demonstrator. Now prior to this, oh, it's the Fuel, what is it called? Fuel Efficient Demonstrator. Fuel Efficient Demonstrator. And it couldn't look more fuel efficient, could it really? <laughs> really? This is not a Prius. We don't want to give anybody the wrong. Absolutely. But for the Army, it's very fuel efficient. Well, the Army is, is very fuel efficient. Yeah, In yeah. fact, there were three objectives uh, with the program. One is to increase fuel efficiency by 30% mm -hmm. over our current fleet of vehicles, like vehicles. Second was to improve the capabilities to the warfighter in the usage of the vehicle, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And third, of course, is to be able to provide protection and ergonomics for the right. uh, vehicle in terms of uh, safety, survivability, and be able to provide that for our soldiers and our soldiers' comfort in the time they're operating. Uh, traditional fuels, diesel, traditional gas, fuels, whatever. Diesel, it, it's also uh, can operate on diesel, right. JP8, and also alternative fuels that we've also... It, it, I remember the Army would buy vehicles from Ford or General Motors or Chrysler yes. or whatever it may be, but the Army is manufacturing this. We built this from the ground up as okay. a test vehicle. Okay. And so um, working with uh, industry, mm -hmm. with automobile, automobile industry, and leveraging the technologies that they have that we can incorporate it, and the intent would be that we would leverage the technologies that we would gain from this vehicle incorporate into our current fleet as gotcha. we reset and refurbish uh, those vehicles. Now this is, this is carbon fiber? Carbon fiber. And there's a lot of uh, aluminum here as well, correct? Quite a bit of aluminum like built in is, as uh, well. These are friends at Alcoa? They are. Oh, they're they are part guys, on the yeah. team as well. Yeah, there you go. There they're you part go. on we, the team as well. Well, we do stuff with Alcoa aluminum all the time, and they're terrific. So what is this, what, what does this vehicle weigh? Uh, it tops out with the equipment load right at about 15,000. 15,000 pounds. pounds. That's about seven, a little more than seven tons. Yes. Okay. Right. What would this vehicle weigh if it was built using the traditional way vehicles like this were built maybe 10 or 15 years ago? Replacing the Alcoa aluminum and the carbon fiber at, would be at another 10,000 pounds? At least 20,000. Okay. Okay. So it'd be another yeah. 10,000 pounds. That's okay, right. so. At least that. Pretty and good. So when you look at that in terms of fuel, and you, mm -hmm. would, you would say even if we are able to get 30% uh, more efficient fuel, seven miles per gallon, uh, the Army has over 300,000 right. uh, tactical vehicles, 200,000 non-tactical so vehicles. So seven miles per gallon is actually a 30% improvement. Absolutely. Just like a Lamborghini. My <laughs> Countach gets that. So, And if you shoot at my Countach, it, it just gets blown off the road. This they can shoot at you all day. This is carbon fiber, but this, ah, ah, ah. I mean, that doesn't move. Steel there. You won't Boy, move that. that. No, that's, and these doors weigh about what, 300 pounds a piece? At least that. Okay. And this is all steel, obviously. Yes. Okay. And so that's going to provide a protection for the soldiers inside right. as they're operating a vehicle as well. Um, and to ensure that they, um, because it's all about uh, being able to accomplish the mission, but also to provide for their security and their survivability in case they come across an implies uh, explosive device or something like that. Full-time four-wheel drive, you can, you can alternate between two and four-wheel? You can go between two and four. Okay, okay, very good. So I imagine all the lumen is probably in the A-arms and the substructure and all of that, Correct. and all the bulletproof stuff is the steel. That's a hinge right there. That's a, that's a hinge. Okay. And it's a four-door, obviously, and it's got yes. a suicide door. Uh, explain the, what's the advantage to a suicide door besides being stylish well, for a soldier? Well, I think for soldiers to be able to, as we can, when they need to exit the vehicle very quickly, they can do so if they okay. need to be able to to uh, transport yeah. the other person a little and bit And this is perfect for driving in Los Angeles because you have your weapon right here. 
so you can return fire on the 405 at any time. And although this door is heavy, yeah. you know, this quick release latch here, you can very quickly uh, oh, see. open the vehicle to, to get, able to get out. out. Very good. So you can get out. And it seats four, and that's it, right? Seats four. But what we've put in, incorporated as we talk about for, uh, for the drivers, it's got the five point seat belt here. Right. And so it's all about ensuring that if they, in fact, uh, come across some type of uh, incident, mm -hmm. explosion or whatever, uh, this is going to keep them in the vehicle. And then the gotcha. seats so that uh, they can reduce spinal injuries and so forth if, in fact, they happen to have something occur. Right, okay. All right. Pretty much uh, not going to rip your muffler off on this baby. As you can see, it's all protected under here in case you go over a roadside bomb or something of that nature. And this, of course, will all be aluminum as well. Impressive. That's uh, obviously bulletproof glass in there. Yes. Boy, that's pretty thick, isn't it? It is. And what is it? It's a four-cylinder engine with a turbocharger and a supercharger, correct? That's correct. And, and, who? I've, and I've got Dr. Grace Bohannock also, who is our uh, chief engineer. Dr. Our Grace, come on in. How you doing, Dr. Jay, Grace? How, how are you? You're the Pleasure. engineer on this deal? Well, I'm, I, I am. Cool. I am. Tell us about the, the engine itself. It's a four-cylinder? It's a four-cylinder. It's a 200-horsepower engine. Um, it has a 568 foot pound of torque. Wow. So it's pretty, you know, it could, it could, could actually do some pulling and, who, and some moving. Who built this engine? What company? It's Cummins. It's a Cummins, Cummins, okay. it's a Cummins diesel. So did you commission them to build this engine? Is, it, is this an existing engine they have adapted for military use? Well, it's an, it's an engine that, w that they adapted and we had to optimize it uh, with our transmission and the integrated starter right. generator in order to optimize it for the mission profiles. And what the is the top speed of a vehicle like this? It goes all, it, it actually almost about 75 miles an about hour. About 75, okay. And that's yeah. over desert terrain, isn't yeah. it? So that's, yeah, yeah. Diff different mileage ba based sure, on different sure. conditions. Okay, very cool. Obviously, it's power steering yeah. and everything like that. And what do we have here? This is obviously to hook if things we, on. If we wanted to sling load, if we wanted uh, transported by helicopter. I see. We, in fact, as you can see up on the top oh, I as see. well. Just put, okay, yeah, just put we a hook could on. Then, yeah. And then if we needed to fly it to some location, we could do so. Of course, we can roll it on board an aircraft yeah. and transport that way as well. Something I thought was pretty cool, you've got solar panels on the roof. Yes. There you go. That's a yes, solid yes, door. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's, boy, a car salesman could do great with this. Listen yeah, to that right door. There. That's the sound of quality right there. That's it. Boy. And, Jay, what you yes. saw inside also is mm -hmm. that the vehicle has to be able to accommodate, in terms of ergonomics, the smallest frame female, male soldier, all the way up to the largest. And right. so that's what you'll see as they're sitting in there. Cool. So this is the solar panel that you talked about. Yeah. And this is good if you want to take the general's kids to Disneyland. There you go. And here's the solar panel right here. That's the yes. solar panel mm -hmm. from the inside. And I imagine you get a few amps a yeah, day. Yeah, just giving a little trickle charge yeah, a little to trickle the... trickle charge to the batteries and yeah. stuff. Very cool. Yes. And how many, gallon, how many gallons of fuel can this, will this, will this hold? 30 gallons. Yeah. Oh, just 30. 30. That's, That's I would, it. I would have That's guessed it. 75 or something yeah. just because you're just 30 gallons of fuel. 30, That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because this would pretty much be running 24 hours a day in the field, wouldn't it? Either making electricity or, or driving. You know? That's right. Driving. And when they stop, generators on. Can we take a look? Let's take a look under the hood, see what sure. the engine looks like. This just opens like this? Okay, and you boy, you need a step ladder, but everything is accessible, isn't it? Cool. We, uh, let's take a look. Can we look inside the vehicle here? Sure. Okay, let's look at the spacious cabin. Cool. Feels okay. good. No home entertainment center in here, obviously. This is ob just your, your transmission. Just normal transmission. Okay. And this is what, to uh, go four-wheel drive or, or uh, two-wheel drive, correct? Correct. Um, computer screen, obviously. Uh, what do we have here? These, oh. these are not for, I mean, at, at a future, um, the next model or the next improvement, we'd like to be able to have these uh, windows where you can remove them. Right. So, in fact, if you had a situation where you need to get out of the, the vehicle right. very, very quickly, you could do so. It's a hatch you, right you there also, the, but you could okay. pop out as well. I see. Is, is there a rear view camera as well here? We have them in some of our vehicles. Okay. Can I open that or no? You should be able sure, to yeah. you can open it. Oh, I see. So that turns like that. And there then you go. Again, just a safety hatch. There you go. Safety hatch. There you go. We also have a cooling vest. Again, uh, work with one of the industry reps to help us develop a cooling vest. 
Now here's something that surprised me. You have ABS and traction control. Uh, why do you need ABS, really? It seems like you're, you're in dirt, so it doesn't... It, kind of just for control, I mean, yeah. Yeah, when you're off-road. Okay, I imagine you can shut that off, mm -hmm. too. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and traction control as well. That just tells for, you when the tire's slipping, right. more or less. Okay. And for pulling. You know. Yeah, yeah. Again, if you're, you know, we're operating in 60% uh, slopes and uh, in grades. So what do we have here? You have uh, your transmission, you got drive, three, one. Is there an extra low so just for a, this pulling is another vehicle out of a tough situation? Or you anything could do that, that? Yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty amazing. Let's see how it goes down the road. You see, the ride and comfort is, is much improved over what we had with the Humvee. Yeah. yeah. So it's got good pickup. It's got good pickup. About seven seconds faster than what a Humvee, about two or three yeah. out of 30. That noise you're hearing is the constant leveling system always accounting for itself, right? That's correct. Well, we're on midnight patrol in Los Angeles. Actually, it's quite easy to drive. It's very maneuverable. I mean, this power steering feels like a nice. like a 67 Cadillac or one of those mid-60s Chryslers. You just do this. You got absolutely no road feel, but there's absolutely no effort involved in turning the wheel. Turning radius is actually pretty good. Forty-five, fifty miles an hour is very smooth. That is the most power, power brake I've ever felt. There's no such thing as a speed bump when you're driving this. A speed bump would be like a Mercedes. <laughs> Believe me, people get out of your way. You know, you finish driving this thing and you find Toyota Corollas crushed up under the wheel well. And most of the controls are standard that you'd find in a SUV or any car, steering wheel, you know, turn signal indicator, all that. This thing's a lot of fun to drive. This can make you want to enlist. Boy, generals get to have all the fun, don't they? I tell you. Cool. Well, that is pretty cool. Pretty, ama pretty amazing vehicle. I'm sorry I never got a chance to fire off any of the weapons, but I want to thank the general and Grace, our engineer. Thank you. Appreciate You're a terrific Appreciate engineer. Pleasure. General, thank you, thank you very thank much. You very and of course, much, Goodyear and Alcoa Aluminum for uh, making a vehicle like this to protect our soldiers and make them safe. So good work, gentlemen, Thanks ladies. Much. Thank you so thank much. You. And uh, men and women of the armed forces, Thank you for your service. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, we know you'll be safe in something like this. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thanks very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys next week.